Hey, it's Dan Nickerson, and as you probably know, uh, WordPress 5.0 came out this week, and it is loaded with Socrates Gutenberg, which is a new, basically a, a new block building, page building system for WordPress. So, you know, one of the things that's interesting is a lot of themes these days all come with their own page builders, and they have drag and drop functionality. And so, WordPress comes along, and they introduce a whole new technology and whole new drag and drop uh, block building system which kind of you know takes the wind out of the sails of a lot of these page building systems because people are going to become used to using Gutenberg. Uh, out of the box, I'm not a fan of Gutenberg, but I certainly see its potential and I see how in the future uh, everyone will be using Gutenberg and they'll know how to use it and so forth. The good news is, is that since Socrates has never really relied on drag and drop and page builders, um, it's probably the, one of the fastest frameworks you can use if you want to build a Gutenberg site. So it's already the fastest framework you can use if you're using Beaver Builder or Elementor or, or other plugins like that. But if you want to use Gutenberg, it's even better. So that's one of the things I like about it. So I'm going to show you just a few tips and tricks on Gutenberg. I've spent about 45 minutes total playing around with Gutenberg. I am not going to use it right now. Um, I could see myself slowly uh, implementing it on some sites and trying it, but I still think it's a little bit clunky and it's too unfamiliar if you've been using WordPress for years uh, to just jump right in and start using it. If you're a new customer, then, then maybe it's a little bit easier, but there's some things I don't like about it, and I think that there are will be lots of improvements, let's put it this way. So before I start shooting tutorial videos and start changing how I develop my own plugins and so forth, I'm gonna wait to see how Gutenberg evolves over the coming months. So right now I'm on a, a sample WordPress install uh, within Gutenberg. I even grabbed an old Gutenberg Bible as the header. That looks pretty cool actually. Um, so I'm gonna go into the back end and this is the dashboard. Now, but when you first install, uh, first upgrade to WordPress, WordPress 5.0, you're gonna notice that uh, the classic editor is gone. Uh, it has the Gutenberg editor. So there are quick ways to fix that. There's two ways to do this. Um, there's two plugins. Right now it's called Disable Gutenberg. It just completely disables it, restores the old editor, and you'll never know the Gutenberg existed, right? Or there's Classic Editor, uh, which I'm finding I like a little bit better because you can switch back and forth kind of easy, easier as well. So there are benefits to Gutenberg. Don't get me wrong, there are benefits. I'm going to show you some of what those are but I'm not really encouraging everyone to jump in to dive full bore into Gutenberg right away. So I'm gonna use the classic editor. And the reason I like that is because I go to my pages, you'll see you can use the block editor or the classic editor, and it shows that it was already built with the classic editor. So that's pretty simple. So if I click on classic editor, that's what it looks like, sample page, just like what we're all familiar with. If I go back here to block editor, then it loads up the Gutenberg system, okay? so. First impressions of this, uh, you know, it's it's fine, but it's not familiar, so it's it's difficult. But if you look to the right, some things look familiar, right? So um, it, this shows you how you can do permalinks. This shows the featured image, so I can just grab a featured image like I would on any other site and select it. Then there is discussion, uh, which is good because a lot, typically you have to run all the way to the bottom of the page, so that's kind of a good feature. Page attributes, that's all the templates, right? So this, whatever theme you're using, will show all the templates. I have it set for full width right now. And then they have custom header, that's a Socrates issue. Elements, this is all Socrates, so these are things you can do. Header navigation, also Socrates. So this is all Socrates stuff here. And then you click on block, and it says no block selected. So I haven't even used this yet, um, but I'm gonna show you how blocks work in a second. Let me click up here. This shows you some different options, a spotlight mode, you can focus on one block at a time, you know, the kind of things that you don't necessarily need right now. Full screen mode, so this brings back the old sidebar, so if you want the sidebar, you undo the full screen mode. And then code editor, so that just shows you what the raw code looks like. This has some advantages, if you're gonna delete a bunch of, of, of if, if you wanna delete a bunch of things you've added, then you wanna go to code editor, because otherwise it's a real pain to delete all of the blocks that you built. Uh, so I'm going to exit that. And then we have manage all reusable blocks. That's a cool feature. I'm going to show you that. Copy all content. Options. I haven't even clicked options yet. Okay, enable tips. That's some cool things there. So let me give you the number one question I'm getting from people is, oh my God, all my Socrates short codes are gone or my drop down menu is gone. Yes, the drop down menu is gone. What plugin developers will slowly start doing is creating a way for you to use blocks. These are blocks. So there's embeds, there's reusable, 
and a lot of plugin developers now are adding new blocks uh, into the uh, into the plugin. So if I go into plugins, add new, for example, I can search for uh, Gutenberg blocks. And you're going to find all of these guys that are creating their own blocks. So this is going to be, you know, just like you have all of these drag and drop page builders, all these developers are going to start using blocks. So if I click on any of these things here, like this one's the biggest one, 5,000, click on install. This then adds a bunch of different blocks that I can use and add to any page uh, or post or whatever. So let me just let this one install and activate. And this will make sense in a second. Of course, the, they're all going to want you to um, opt into their list and all that other kind of stuff too. So you don't necessarily want to add all these yet. Um, but I'm going to go in here and go back to sample page, block editor. And now if I go to plus up here, I scroll down, you're going to see atomic blocks. So they have all these different short codes that are in here, right? So I can grab this profile box and click it and it gives me the name. Here, if I want to select an image, I can select an image. I can add the name, block name, right? This is actually be a person, block title, and then block text. So it kind of works just like a drag and drop page builder would work, right? So if I click on preview, there's what that block title looks like, right? So once again, none of this has to do with the Socrates. It's just the it's just the, the theme framework. It's not doing any of this. This is all Gutenberg, right? So I can go in here, plus this shows you most use. So if you use a lot of things on a regular basis, you can do this short code. You can make your own little short codes there if you want. That's kind of a cool feature. Uh, let's scroll down some more. Uh, layout elements, columns. So columns are already built in. So I can click on column. And then you have to go in here and click plus, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, there's three columns there. So one code block, two code blocks. Should be another one. Is that only two? So it's a little bit weird because it's not full screen. I think that's the element there, adding columns there. So add some more stuff there. Click on update, preview, and that'll show two columns there. So it's a little bit clunky to get used to there. So what I'm getting at is that there is lots of cool things you can do with it. You can add all kinds of blocks. You can make your own blocks. You can embed widgets and categories. So that's kind of cool. Uh, different page breaks, separators, buttons. So you can add a button here. And of course, this is WordPress. This isn't Socrates, so there's a button there. So I can click on Update, Preview, and there's the button, right? There's no text in it. But here's what's kind of cool. Okay, so uh, if I go in here, I can go down to uh, Reusable, and here are some blocks that I uh, created. But you can manage all your reusable blocks, okay? so. This is, and it's kind of weird, they don't have a direct link to this, you have to go into there, but, but for example, these are Socrates buttons, these are, this is a test inset that I did. But if you have multiple installs, let's just say for example, uh, Google AdSense, right? So say you have Google AdSense, and you want to do like a Google AdSense, you know, 300, you know, whatever, 300 by 250 ad, right? You would paste the AdSense code in here in text mode. So this is, let's say my AdSense code, and then I click on publish, all right? And now that is now, um, whoop, I gotta go back to blocks. See, I can't go directly back to blocks. It's now in here, right? So once I've made that block, I can then export that block and just saved to my thing, uh, my download. That means that once I create, save all my blocks offline, whenever I make a new install, I can upload that and then I can drag and drop and you insert these blocks of code anywhere I want. So if you say you have an opt-in box or you have uh, some kind of ad code or a paragraph or a signature, you can make your own block and add it into any posts and then export them all, import them into new installs, and then you instantly have them in the install. So to me, that's the coolest feature. You could do this to a certain extent with short codes right now, but blocks is kind of going to be the future, so you can build your own, do all kinds of th cool things like that. Okay, so let's go, so anyhow, that's that. I'm sure they'll end up putting that in the navigation. You can import, so if I wanna import, I just click on import, and it imports it right in here, right? So I could technically do this with all the Socrates shortcodes and plugins and section templates and all that kind of stuff. So I probably will, I'm just gonna wait a little bit to see what happens with the Gutenberg space. 
maybe a, maybe a, a few weeks or a month or two. Then what I can do is I can actually have a lot of my pre-done section codes all built into a, a Gutenberg block plugin, right? So I might do that. Just want to see how this whole space develops. So once again, I can click on Classic Editor and I go right back to the page. It shows what all this code looks like. One, and the way they, of course, the way they have this now too, if you want, you can actually just copy this because they have everything. Everything is essentially um, labeled so that you know what it is. So go back to visual mode and there's that. Um, so you have classic editor or I can go back and I can use the block editor. Anyhow, it all works perfectly with Socrates. The only thing that's different is the drop down short codes. And if I want to get those, I go to classic editor and then here they all are, right? So all my short codes are there. I can plug them in and this is kind of a cool thing, but watch, watch what I do. Um, let me redo this. I'm sorry. Let's do this. I'm going to do blue panel. Uh, with some text like so. I'm going to click on update and then I'm going to go back to pages and I'm going to go back to block editor and now this is a block in here. See this block? And I can actually go here and I can say convert to block. And once I do that it'll actually um, make a block out of it that I can reuse if that makes sense. Uh, see, it's all just—it's all kind of clunky. So, is it in there? Reusable blocks. Well, this is my Google AdSense ad. So, anyhow, you get the idea. I want to just give a general overview and just to just to show you what it is. Play around with it if you want, or just stick to the classic editor for now and slowly learn it. But I hope this was helpful. I know it's a little confusing, but I just want to give something, uh, give an overview of Socrates and Gutenberg. So, thanks for your time.